The COVID-19 pandemic is impacting our lives in unprecedented ways. The novel coronavirus is very contagious, with an R0 value estimated to be 2.5. That is, in the initial stages of this epidemic, every infected person will infect 2.5 people on average. Moreover, people can be infectious yet asymptomatic. There are several public policy strategies to deal with the growing pandemic. First, our strategies aim to delay the spread of the virus, including quarantining the infected persons and their contacts, lockdowns and restrictions of human mobility, and social distancing measures such as prohibiting public gatherings and limiting public transportations. The goal of these policies is to flatten the infection curve and manage the growth of infected patients so as not to overrun the healthcare system. Second, our strategy is to expand the capacities of the healthcare system, including purchasing new equipment, building temporary hospitals, recruiting retired healthcare workers and volunteers, and moving idle capacity from less impacted to severely impacted areas. Lockdowns and other mobility restrictions are effective in delaying and containing the spread of the coronavirus. My co-authors and I find that in China, the lockdown of the city of Wuhan which is the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak from January 23, 2020, reduced infection cases elsewhere in China by more than 50%. However, lockdown measures come with severe negative impact on the economy. Recent data shows that the Chinese industrial value added declined by about 25% in February 2020 relative to the same month last year. The lockdown measures implemented in the U.S. has already led to record number of unemployment claims. Economic indicators point toward a pandemic-induced recession. Some even predicted depression. Any good policy needs to balance the trade-off between health and economy. What are the alternatives? It's useful to take a look at the approach taken by South Korea, which is extensive testing plus targeted quarantines. Instead of a wholesale lockdown, only individuals confirmed with the virus and their contacts are quarantined. These result in a much smaller negative impact on the economy. There are two necessary conditions for the Korean approach. First, tests are quick, accurate, and readily available. Second, extensive social contact tracing is feasible. The U.S. is definitely making progress in the first condition. But the social contact tracing may be more limited in the U.S. because of HIPAA protection of private health information. Before we develop a proven vaccine and effective therapeutic treatment, we are unfortunately faced with this tough trade-off: protecting the population health and avoiding deep recession, which itself can cause many harms to the population health and the public safety.